Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Virginia. This game is uh, very similar to Twin Peaks, David Lynch style. Um, it's pretty short, about an hour and a half if you kind of run through it. It's uh, similar to a movie with a lot of a kind of cryptic, uh, a lot of cryptic uh, things go on. Um, I was fairly confused in the, my first run through, but after kind of watching, watching it over again and kind of um, studying it a bit more, it's, it's a bit more sensical. Um, so in this Let's Play, I'm going to try to explain um, what's going on, just for those that are curious and kind of didn't pick it up the first time around or want to get a uh, better explanation of what's going on. So this game takes place in uh, Kingdom, which is a town in Virginia. Um, it actually says a small amount of facts here. The town of Kingdom was founded in 1784. Um, there's an Air Force base outside of town, which is like right here. And the granite mine closed in 1965, right here, right next to the Air Force base. So a lot of these places on this map will actually come up during the game. We'll see the observatory. We'll see the gas station. We'll see the water tower. Um, we'll see this tunnel. We'll see the diner. And we'll see the roadhouse. Now this game is... Even the main menu, it says play feature. You know, it's it's not it's not really a game. It's more of a it's more of a movie in a kind of video game form. Um, if we look at the letter to create from the creators, it says Virginia was in production for two and a half years. Um, they started exploring in 2014 what would take place, and various people worked on it. And uh, it says the game would not be possible without great luck and fortune of circumstance or support or sacrifice. Not, not, not least financial of loved ones. It's a strange and confounding experience making in Virginia. We hope it's resulted in a strange and confounding game. So it's kind of, you know, it is like kind of, you know, they did model left kind of uh, David Lynch style. We'll see a lot of kind of homage to X-Files as well. You play as, you play as an FBI agent. Um, all right, let's get started. During the summer of 1992, the FBI undertook an investigation in the small town of Virginia. Based on the official record of events, the following story has been written. This is the old mines that you'll see like coming up later. Observatory, we'll see coming up later. I think that's Lucas's house. station that we encounter a couple times. Mm -hmm. 
one kind of neat thing about this game is there's very little reading and no no voice acting. All right, in this scene, you're actually playing as Anne's father locked in a box um, with that key. And uh, that will come up at the very end of the game. We'll see. I'll talk about it more near the end of the game, but we'll see that key off over and over again during the course of this game. You know, it's a quick little scene where you're locking a box. So here you're playing Anne, and you're about to become an FBI agent. So you pull the lipstick out. Lipstick is kind of a symbolic in this game as like kind of a mask um, to cover up kind of things. Um, So in this scene, you're you're in the FBI headquarters, um, about to get your badge, as I recall. There's no running in this game. So straight ahead, there's a line of people waiting to go on stage to get their uh, kind of it's an award ceremony kind of thing. And we'll see this red light over and over again throughout the entire game. Yeah, it's symbolic of, um, well, it's, it's, we see it during a darkroom sequence and so on. So you're kind of just waiting for your name to be called here. So this is like the FBI, kind of uh, assistant director or so on. His name is Cord McCarran. And uh, we'll see him over and over again. So he hands us our badge. Now we're listening to a tape recorder of uh, kind of a harpy monitor. You'll eventually learn that your dad was sick uh, and uh, you had to take care of him. So there's also uh, your partner you'll meet pretty soon. And uh, she also has a sick parent, but I believe this is your dad. Um, this is probably just a, a, a dream sequence. So this is your apartment. Your, your name is Ann Tarver. So you're going into your apartment. You just moved in. I think you recently became FBI kind of thing. There's not really much to interact with this room. There's a computer over there with, uh, with no keys, which I thought was pretty funny. It's strange they didn't model it, but whatever. Floppy disks. Hilarious. Yeah, so this is another dream sequence where you're actually looking at yourself who is sleeping. Um, you know, you're walking into your own apartment. This is actually you, um, as far as I can tell. Actually, I really don't. Yeah, I think this is you. It's always hard to see. Like, this game switches perspective a lot. And it's kind of hard to tell who you are at the moment. Yeah, it looks like you have. Okay. I think I see female hands there with nail polish. Yeah, there's nail polish there, definitely. 
paint nail polish. So that, that's that's your character. Um, then there's this door, this red door that you'll see over and over again. So that was kind of a dream sequence to like... So now we're waking up. And you'll see this part of the key. We saw this already um, earlier. This is what your dad used to lock that box in the very beginning of the game, but it's broken off. This is just the head of the key. I'll try to get the achievements if I can. Um, don't believe there's been any achievements so far. I've already earned a few in my first playthrough, but not not many. So you're getting ready for work. Putting on your FBI badge. So it says Anne there. And you're about to put on the lipstick, but then you decide not to, and you're like, ah, screw it, and you throw it in the trash. This game has lots of jump cuts. Which you'll see. So it's, like you get, it's not like you explore the full, in, the full environment. There are some things to explore in this game, but... Not a lot of, uh... Alright, so now... If you just look through the right side of the screen... In this taxi sequence... You'll actually earn an achievement for some strange reason. Yeah, there it goes. Achievement unlocked. So you're looking at that key head again. Thinking back to, uh, when you unlocked the box that you saw in the very beginning of this sequence of the game. All right, so now you're in FBI headquarters. Probably first day on the job. And uh, I don't think there's anything to do in this room. There's a whole lot of men working here, which may be symbolic, I'm not sure. This is like the uh, FBI director's office. The secretary will come up just a little bit in the game. Director to the office of the assistant director. That's what you're about to see. So it's a pretty big room. Very similar to X-Files in terms of like just office layout and stuff like this. I don't think there's anything in this room that you really have to do. It's got like a little putting putting thing. It's a pretty huge office. I don't know why you'd need it that big. I don't know what this little dot is, this little ball is. Oh, I guess that's a golf ball, huh? I'm over there. So you can sit down. So you can see his name is Cord McCarn. And he throws you a file. You're not gonna be able to read this the first playthrough. It goes pretty fast. But what this basically what this document basically says is you're to investigate another FBI agent whose name is Maria Har Harringpin. Um and you're to just watch her and observe her and report any suspicious activity. And they don't explain why, and they tell you not to tell anybody about it. So you're basically kind of assigned to internal affairs. So Maria Harpin is uh, tasked to monitor, and you and Tarver has been tasked to monitor her. 
So that goes by pretty fast. And I didn't click, it just does it, it just automatically skips. So now you've got that document that says observer and watcher. But you're assigned to her, like work with her. She, you know, she's on a case. So now we're going to see her, I believe. So you're walking through like the FBI building. So she's like down in the basement, kind of FBI style, or uh, X-Files style. This is her, uh, this is her office. That was in the letter Harp. Harp Harperin. Maria Harperin. This is your partner. And there she is. Don't know if there's anything in here. So she's assigned to check out, um, uh, check into a missing person case. Um, to find out the whereabouts of this guy. Um, this boy, his name is Lucas. You'll discover that pretty soon. Um, I think there are. One of these scenes is a pair of glasses. I don't know if it's here or the next one. To the next scene, future scene. So she's she's not real happy to work with you. So there's her. Uh, there's her name on her desk, Maria Harper. And so now you're driving with her. There's an achievement for messing with the radio. Now we're going to the town of Kingdom through that tunnel. Entering Kingdom, population 4,000. Kingdom Overlook. There's a observatory off the distance. All right, now we're in the diner. We can take some sugar packets for another achievement. So our partner leaves us with the bill. So we're looking for Lucas Fairfax, missing person. So now we're at Lucas's home. And this is his father, his father's a, a, a reverend. And so here we're here with some sheriffs. This guy will come up again too. This guy's name is Hart Hartley Taft. He's a sheriff. He's one of the main uh, 
I need male characters in this game. And this, uh, this guy, Reverend Fairfax, is going to come up a bunch. And this is Edith Fairfax, Lucas's mom. And, uh, you know, they're concerned that her son, their son's missing. So this is the parents' bedroom. If you go in here and you look in the uh, wastebasket, there's a note that says Edith Fairfax basically wants to apply for computer science into uh, Anderson Community College. And the day is 19, the date is 1992. As it said in the beginning of the game, so this is kind of a recent application. Right. If you look around, you'll see feathers in this game. I think there's maybe one in the bathroom. Yeah. I'll probably miss some, but every, there's there's ten feathers in this game. They're kind of collectibles. Just don't earn an achievement. There's also flowers we'll see coming up as a collectible. You don't really have to get them all. It's just so this is Lucas's room. This is the kid that we're looking for. He's got some books. Um, he's got a camera with tape in it, and it tapes out across over the wall. I actually like the uh, graphics here, especially if you like look outside. And yeah, they did a lot of work in this game in terms of just like the visuals. You know, it's a lot of detail just for. Kind of a small scene. Anyway, to continue on, we're going to find a uh, secret um, room in the closet. I don't know how you know it's there, but whatever. Here's that red light again that we saw when we were getting an FBI badge. You know, darkroom light. So we see Lucas's guitar. He's been taking photos. That looks like, what, uh, hardly Taft the Sheriff, I guess? That's the water tower. That looks like him and his mom. So we're going to take his photo book. This, uh, this bison will come up a lot. Um, a lot of people in the net basically believe it's symbolic of um, maybe duty. Um, right here, I think it's a real bison. It's not symbolic, but it'll come up again a bunch of times. It's open for interpretation what that bison is really symbolic of, but I think duty might be... Or maybe male establishment, some people think that. Okay, we're at the gas station. So another achievement is if you can, if you look at this one, there's a menu here for uh, pizza. And you'll eventually get, you know, order pizza or something at your house. More silliness. So 
So if you look in the glove compartment box, this is Marie Harp, Halperin that we've been tasked to investigate. But she's also known as Maria or Ortega. Ortega. So that will come up a little bit. There's that photo booth, by the way. This, this photo booth will come up again. So those kids will see them again. There's a there was a woman driving and two uh, two male kids. We'll see those kids again. In uh, upcoming scenes. I don't know why you're carrying around this document that says like investigate her. It's like a really bad idea. Kind of nervously. Uh, Make sure she didn't see it. So now we have Lucas's book, a missing persons case, and a case to investigate uh, Maria, missing per persons flyer, and the key. And we're in our bedroom. So it's observatory, so he's been visiting the observatory. They'll come up, there's a UFO scene right there. Picture of UFO. And the cave. So now we're kind of lucid dreaming I suppose and like looking at her again from our from um, another body I believe you're playing as her this is kind of like collections board to see all the feathers and stuff you got or whatever all right so now we're kind of in a dream sequence we see, uh, you know, this is like a, all the sheriffs are in a diner talking to the waiter, who's obviously not there. This is uh, Harley Taft, the sheriff. Um, we're in Lucas's house again. Here's those boys that flipped us off earlier from the gas station. And here's this, this, uh, this young lady who's uh, going to come up with a bunch. Um, you know, she's hanging out with these boys, but she's uh, she plays a pretty pivotal role in this game a little bit. Coming up, she's kind of our kind of our mean kids, I guess. You know, hoodlums, teen angst, and so on. Here's a family portrait, so you can see his father and his mother. His mother's over here. And she's still crying about it, that you know, he's missing. Don't know if there's anything else around here. I'm sure I'll miss a feather or two. I don't have them all memorized where they are. So here we see like uh, his father board, you know, boarding up Lucas's room, you know, which very likely didn't happen, but maybe it's a symbol of uh, his father's his father's oppression or trying to keep him keep him locked up or you know pressing him. And here's that red light again from the dark room. So now we're in a car with the FBI, the assistant FBI guy. And it looks like we're about to run over you or something like this. That could have been Maria too, I don't 
couldn't tell from that quickly. Um, and we're about to see the uh, buffalo again. We're still in a dream sequence. The bison. So now there's that red door. Because the bison is kind of symbolic of... Um, duty or male male drive perhaps and this is the uh, general his name is uh, he comes up a few times general Emin Eminegger um, he runs he works at the military base so now we're back in Harpen Harpen's office and, uh, she's not here. In one of these scenes in her office, you can get a pair of sunglasses. Her glasses, I think. Oh, here it is. It's like another weird achievement. All right, so we're really here for this locket. So this locket plays a vital role in kind of the plot of the game. So this is a picture of Maria's mom that you'll come to learn. Her name is Judith or Ortega. And she wears that locket and kind of gets mad that you that you have it. I think I missed a, fla uh, a feather back over here. I shouldn't have it. Yeah, I think there's there used to be a feather right there. Oh well. Not a big deal. You can always load the chapters and stuff. So now we're here at the mines. So there's these flowers that you can pick up. They kind of just uh, appear in your apartment. I think there's three flowers in the scene right here. somewhere around this grass area and of course you can't run so it takes forever to look, look around there's another one Should be one more somewhere. There it is. So this is the cave from Lucas's drawings. Guess we're gonna go check it out. See if he was using it. See if he came here. So it's kind of like a hangout, I guess. You know, cigarettes and beer and whatever. Some chairs. Booze. So here there's this, there's this bird. This bird is a red bird. And also the state bird of Virginia. Um, it comes up a bunch again as well as another symbol in the game. Some people believe it's a symbol of uh, freedom. 
kind of hard to tell exactly what it's a symbol of, but... Freedom kind of makes sense. It's kind of trapped in a cage right here. And uh, you're going to let it out. I don't know why there's a ton of bird cages back here. So the bird gets squished and your partner gets hurt. So another achievement here is to drink this coffee a bunch. So back there is the general with a... Uh, you can see him walking up with a teddy bear. Um, we'll see that bear again later on. And your partner's hurt. So he puts the bear down. I might have already got this achievement, but if you drink this coffee a bunch of times. So there's Emma Neg Negger, the general. I don't know why he's shaking your hand. All right, so in this scene, I think there's another dream sequence, like, because there's obviously, it's not real. Like, there's a bird on an autopsy table. And uh, over here is another achievement where if you look at uh, this little wooden figurine, you'll eventually unlock an achievement. Figurine of an angel. I don't think there's anything else to look at in this room. I'm sure there's a feather or something somewhere. the bird flies away and the general is there for some bizarre reason all right so now we're back in the cave area so here's the military base three hoodlums are hanging out again and it says police line, line don't cross it says air force u.s air force installation deadly use of force authorized so here we can see uh that kid and here's this kid and um uh, and that woman again they're all smoking This kid wants to get tough. I don't know why he's like charging him. So he grabs her locket and throws it. That's pretty mean. So she she arrests him. Now we search him. He's got a switchblade. And a wallet that appears empty. So now we're back. You know, we're processing him in the sheriff's office, looks like. We're putting a knife in the evidence. Open the wallet, and um, we find this mall thing, which is a Dominion construction. It just talks about 
Building family restaurants facilities. So this is LSD actually. And uh, you know you put this on your tongue. So you take off a tab for whatever reason, put the rest in the evidence, and put a tab of LSD inside the red envelope. I'm not sure why you did that, but that's what you did. So now you have flowers. So you get an achievement for looking at the flowers. And you have um, pizza. You get an achievement for looking at the pizza and sugar packets kind of things that you clicked on. If you didn't click on these things, these things wouldn't appear. The flowers and the uh, sugar packets and the pizza. Oh yeah, and there's another achievement here. There's a model train flyer here. So it says on track. Newsletter of the TC Railroad Enthusiasts. Special offer. Model Railroad. You'll eventually unlock that achievement down the road. So you're back at your apartment. Here's the feather I found. I'm sure there's a few that I missed. There's that key stub. your apartment key away in your LSD tab. And go to bed. Wednesday. So now you're back in Maria's office. So this is the... Uh, is the general's hat? I think it might be. I don't know if there's anything. Let's see, there's sheriff of the general's hat. I don't think there's anything else to do in this in this room right now. Oh, this might be your father's hat. This is your father's hat. That's what it is. It's a uh, kind of a sh police chief or something like this. So this is a furnace. This furnace will come up in the end of the game. Um, I'll talk about it later. It's just another like kind of waking dream or you know dream that sequence. Obviously, it's not there. Inside is the bird that we saw before. Maybe symbolizing freedom. You know, the burning of freedom and kind of being trapped and disappeared. Back in your assistant director's office. He's looking over your, I think, file on Maria. Back in the locket. So now we're doing a search. who this Maria person is. You're logged in logged in as you. Searching for Harpen. Halprin. You're finding that there's one entry, Hal Maria Halprin. And then it says, okay, records transferred from previous file. 
1990. That previous file was from Maria Ortega. Ortega. So there's two Ortegas, Maria and Judith. And yeah, so Maria Ortega, she says, please see file Maria Harpen, file transferred. So she renamed herself, so it's the same person. But there's this Judith Ortega. And then it says, go look at the records department. So now we're in the records. Looking at microfiche. Try to find out more about Judith. It says it's 1968. Um, distinguished Special Agent Judith Orte Ortega, one of the Bureau's intake of the Go Getting Female Agents, was awarded the FBI Medal for Mer Meritosius Achievement for Extraordinary Work Cracking the Cracking One of These Cases. During her time, she's a the, the plucky young wife, mother of one, set a high watermark. Amongst her lady contemporaries. Man, that music just gets super loud, so I'm gonna turn it down. Let's go back. Um, so, the high mark for her lady contemporaries is reporter feels Mrs. Ortega runs on fast to establishing herself as a role model for law abiding colored women everywhere. So kind of some hints of racism kind of stuff going on. Um, Mr. Ortegra says, said he, said he saw his moral influence reflected in his wife's achievement. <laughs> Director Hoover was not in attendance, but it is said to be encouraged by the work of, of the Bureau at large. I like how they talked to the man and said, and he said, yeah, my moral influence is reflected in my wife's achievements. Ridiculous. So that's that page. So her, Marie's mother is accomplished and got an award. But now we learn um, that the Ortega woman continues to make wild allegations regarding conspiracy. And uh, actually, it says here, Edgar. Further, I am writing new information regarding the back channels regarding affirmation, especially Agent Ortegra. This text is messed up. I'm just going to turn off this text. He's one of they need it. This is under text translations. Oh well, anyway, um, while allegations of conspiracy supposed breaches of ethical guidelines, I'm concerned at how her spurious findings might be interpreted with the reach. So she's making wild allegations regarding conspiracy and breaches of ethical guidelines. Your reputation and mine of that of the Bureau must be safeguarded. Cord understands this, and I value his cooperation in a sensitive manner. I guess this is stuck, huh? Oh, there it goes. Um, yeah, so Cord is the F assistant FBI director. Um, so this is obviously written a while back, so he was still working at the time. It's common common knowledge internally. While sanctioned by applied scientists, Ortega has a predilection for unconventional methods. I feel this could be turned to our advantage or deniability to be an issue. have taken your recommendations to suppress this activity and divert Agent Ortega's 
in inquisitiveness to a more productive avenues. This woman, if this woman's overenthusiastic behavior persists, we shall be forced to take additional measures. So she's like a scientist with a lab. And uh, she believes there's a conspiracy and something going on. They're basically going to frame her. Predilection for unconventional methods are going to turn it to an advantage. So here we learn that uh, under suspicions of gross mis misconduct of FBI property, um, prohibited use of controlled substances, Judith, subject of internal affairs for a period of no less than some months, finding that's against strict face all charges, recommendations to be suspended immediately without pay, status revoked and definitely pending a formal tribunal. And that's her picture from the locket. Um, you have Ortegra. So it's 1972 when this happened. So 68, she got it awarded. And then four years later, she was under, she was, uh, she was basically framed for breaching ethical standards regarding controlled substance um, insubordination. So she was under no less than, she was under investigation for, what, five months? With internal affairs so now we're in the, now we um and are investigating her her daughter for internal affairs and uh, the same guy core is authorized both so this is uh Mar maria looking at her locket and her locket got thrown away So here's his mayor guy. We don't see him too much, but bring home the bacon. So I guess his name is Bacon. So he hands us like a pen that we can pick up. Bring home the bacon. No, it's just a construction thing that we saw from that kid that was hanging out. Here we are, Maria again. So now we're in the observatory. There's an observatory over there with the construction business. This is basically an abandoned observatory. I guess the thing is they're going to build a mall here or something. I don't know. They're going to build something. I'm not sure exactly what they're building. Maybe another military installation. All right, so now we're in the observatory. You can hear the cooing of pigeons. And you can kind of see it's all like um, kind of run down. kind of in disarray. You can see like the beat up boards and so on. So you're just, so you can see like it's all kind of gutted. So there's another flower over there and that's like the fourth flower in the game. So here we're gonna go upstairs. And so now we're going to hide and we're going to see um, Lucas's father with that young girl that we've been seeing, that hoodlum. And she slaps him. Obviously, they're in some kind of relationship together. So pretty, 
pretty uh, suspicious. So we're back at Lucas's home. Nobody's home, apparently. So she's going to break in without a warrant. And she gives us the lockpicking gun, which is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever seen a lockpicking gun like that. All right, so we're back here. So here's that, um, this leads back to the application we saw before. Instant admit, congratulations. Please inform you that I have a mission to accelerate a computer science program for the fall semester. Um, committed to help you being a successful student. Should you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to call. Warmest congratulations. So this is to Edith, Edith Fairfax, um, Lucas's mom. So apparently she did submit the application and got admitted, or maybe you submitted it, I don't know. Because you picked up the application. Um, so now uh, Maria's just kind of going through stuff, searching for clues. I don't think there's anything in this room. There's ten feathers in this game. I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of them, but whatever. Alright, so now we're in the uh, father's study. You know, he's got some guns and he's a hunter, obviously. Um, he's a reverend. So I think all these drawers are locked except one. So you just open this one. So you're going to find this yellow box. Alright, so now we're at uh, the Red Barn, I believe it's called. Which is right in the roadhouse right here. You know, so we've already been, we've been to the gas station, the observatory, and the old mine. We've seen the Air Force Base. And the tunnel. So now we're at the roadhouse. She's got the glasses there. Oh, here's another feather. There's a guide on Steam if you want to collect all the feathers. It doesn't really matter. So she's giving us her wedding ring. Don't know if she's really married. They don't really talk about that. Um, So now we're in the roadhouse. I think there's another thing you can get somewhere. Oh yeah, this is a red bandana. So this is another achievement. Or kind of, on, you know, not really an achievement, but it'll unlock something. Like... There's lots of things in this game you can pick up, and then you'll see them later. Being used. This is like a uh, real Twin Peaks kind of music here.
Yeah, so you're just gonna hang out and watch these people. Watch these people. And this guy makes a move on you. And you put her ring on, saying, nope, I'm married. Go away. Now we see this kind of red light that we've seen a bunch of times in the game. So now we're going to open the box. See a dead bird. And a film strip. So now we're dancing with Maria. So now we're hanging out with Maria after... We're on the, uh, we're on the old water tower. There's the observatory off in the distance. Thursday. So now we're waking up somewhere new. This is Maria's house. And she's going to be downstairs. So it looks like we slept on the couch. Yes, so, not, so I don't think they're lovers or anything like this. Um, she would be waking up, I guess, on the bed if they were lovers or something like this. I think she just crashed, crashed at her place. So there's lots of books butterfly collection. There's a locked door. We'll see that locked door later in the game. And we see like a uh, wheelchair access stairs. And another feather. So we're looking around her room. Looks like a whole bunch of stuff being boxed up. Women strike peace. Save our sister. Kind of a bed. I'm not sure whose room this is. You know, is this her mom's stuff maybe? I don't know. And here we have a clean room with a hospital bed. Um, so I think her dad was also sick, or maybe her mom, not sure. She had a sick person in her life, essentially. Some dead flowers. Wheelchair access to go upstairs. Um, wheelchair enabled you know, bathroom. Toilet and bathtub. We can see it. We're playing as ourselves. There she's cooking breakfast for us. I don't think I see any other, I don't think there's any other clues about what's going on. Making eggs. And there's some breakfast on the counter already. Looks pretty yummy. 
Got some toast and sausage and bacon and eggs. FBI Academy shirt. So when here's just the film. So we're like, hey, after partying, we should develop that film. So now we're in her bathroom. We turned it into a dark room. Which is actually pretty hard to do. It takes a lot of work to make a dark room. Developing them. The photos. These are photos we found um, inside Lucas's father's desk. Looking for more clues about Lucas's whereabouts. So you can see there's the bathroom and the bathtub. So inside her bathroom, maybe she already had camera gear or something. We'll discover what this photo is later. It's not overly relevant right now. So she's got a photo of, not sure. It'll, we'll see a little bit closer up later. Yeah, she's like, that photo's dumb. This photo's where it's at. So this looks like the photo between Lucas's father and that young woman. So now we arrested Lucas's father. Yeah, so here, here's that photo. It's Lucas's father, and this looks like the observatory. So maybe Lucas took a photo of his friend and his father. And this sequence basically is going to let him go because there's, there's not really that much evidence, and the evidence was... Uh, Obtained illegally anyway. Oh, here's another feather. There's feathers all over. And I think there's another there's another thing you can do. It says let me find it. Yeah, I missed, I missed a little sun pin. When you're in the observatory, one of the achievements I missed was when you're in that observatory with Harpin, don't go upstairs, look for a sun pin. And it's like to the right of the entrance in the corners. And then now when you're here, um, leave the room, and but don't knock on Harpin's door. Go to the back and find a moon pin. So you're gonna let him go. And that's his wife. She's she's mad at him, obviously. So I think this is the other this is the moon pin. Yeah, so there's a sun pin we missed earlier, but whatever. So here your here your partner's questioning that young girl. And there's nothing, there's no evidence, so she's like, nope. 
And you're both kind of sad. And you're like, ah, there's no evidence here. All there is is infidelity. So you notice under your coffee cup, there's that picture. Like you took a picture of the hands and chains. And that's from... It's basically near the... Uh, it's at the observatory again. I don't know why that picture would actually do anything for you. So this is your report. Um, investigating missing persons case. Led to the process of questioning the parents. Attending. Also attending with, sh with the sheriff. Can be found in the case file. Unusual encounter involving Buffalo. Not pertinent to case. Opportunity to investigate her belongings did not reveal anything suspicious. Potential line involving a personal item belonging to Harp in a small locket depicting a figure will attempt to establish identity, assumed to be a relative. Um, obtained evidence of from residents led myself and agent to a local quarry, uh, to a quarry local to the kingdom. So I don't know why she didn't put in the report about the um, her mother and Ortega. You know, Judith or Tegar, because she already found that information. Maybe it's on the next page, but it doesn't say that here. It just says, like, you know, don't know who she is. Maybe this is an old report. Don't know. And that's that page that we got from the FBI guy that says investigate her. I don't really fully understand exactly why we're here. Like, yeah, there's a picture, but you know, why stake out the observatory? We're just at the observatory. And all we saw was uh, the reverend and the girl. So now we're going to see military vehicles. Now we're going to see this crazy mayor guy go in. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of like questioning you'd possibly do. Like, who cares? The mayor's meeting military people. Now it's this private event. Don't don't enter. Now there's like a fence around the observatory for some reason. And the mayor's driving in. And some guy stopped her. And he's like, FBI. And that guy's like, I don't care. So I'm not really sure what that event is. Or what we hope to, hope to accomplish with that event. She got us a buffalo from the from the toy back there. case is going to fall out. I don't know why we carry around this file with us. It's a really bad idea. Now she knows that she's under investigation like her mom. So she's obviously pissed at us.
She leaves us at the gas station. So now we're walking back to her office. In the FBI headquarters. Now it's like a dream sequence where we're back to this crazy place. Now here's something here. Now here's all the men in the game, or most of the men anyway, the general, the sheriff, or the, the sheriff, the mayor, the priest, reverend, and the FBI guy. So let's investigate her back on her couch. bison and the bird bird disappears becomes a locket so you're looking at your key you get the bison in the file in the taxi. So remember the scene where he threw the locket. Taxi driver pull over and go the other way. Let's go back. So now you're back. Here's some more flowers. I think there's like six flowers in the scene. I think there's three up top and three down below. So now the tree has fell over there. So now we can go get to the locket. First, need to find all the dumb flowers. So that was one. Here's the second one. And there should be one more somewhere. Here's the third one. So 
So now we're gonna very stupidly climb this tree to find the locket. Going into the military base. So now we're down here. There should be some more flowers. After we fall, and I think they're through this tunnel. Let me search around. There should be three more flowers, I believe. More red light. So in this area, there should be three more flowers. Oh, there's one. Do do do. This is when I miss run buttons. Mr. Flower, it's behind, uh, it's behind this. All right, so we got the locket, we're back at the bar. Judith Ortega is now zooming in, so it's going to go back in time to when she was alive. We'll check out where she, what her life is a little bit like. I think you're still playing as you, but you've gone back in time. So I guess this is her apartment. See there, it says J Ortega, so it's her apartment 3B. I don't think she's home. Let's 
Good thing you brought back in time the crazy lockpick tool. stuff and I think this is the same this is the same place you were at with uh, with Maria but I believe this is um, you know when Maria was a kid I guess I could be wrong I say maybe you just went back to Marie's apartment. Maybe it's not back in time. And you're just uh, snooping around. Yeah, I guess it's not back in time. Alright. So now we're going to check out what's behind this door. Looks like Judas's uh, lab. This is where she worked. Looks like she was growing, like messing with flowers. I don't know if she's messing with flowers. Let's see. Definitely flowers hanging upside down. Some kind of crazy bong thing there. Some mind reader, maybe a. Uh, I'll just call it truth machines. A bunch of kind of like lab equipment. Card catalog system. Beaker system. And she's got like a kind of a crazy wall that all points to this guy. A bunch of case files. I'm not sure who this is. I'm not sure you learn 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 about it. These are all, I think, old cases. So they have the date, you know, five nine sixty eight. It's all her old casework. So I guess she went back to her apartment to snoop on her. So now we're back in the assistant director's office. Maybe that guy in the photo with her casework. Maybe that's uh, Cord, Cord McGarn, who is the uh, FBI assistant director. So maybe she's trying to pin him, pin everything on him or something. And that's why he got mad at her and had her investigated. climbing the water tower where you saw her before. this 
Just file on you. You're just gonna chuck it. See if I had enough. And she gives you the red envelope with the acid tab on it. I don't know how she has the red envelope. I guess she took it from you. I'm not really sure. Because you put it down on your bed right there. Maybe she snuck into your house and took it. I don't know. So I think you're dreaming again. The FBI assistant director's there. So there she hit your badge. He's disappointed. a bunch of feathers now. There's 10 of them in this game, so. You can kind of see the different names of them. Oh yeah, here's our model train. Got the achievement for that. There you saw the pizza in the packet, the flowers. Now the sheriff's here to arrest you. So now all the men in the game, for some reason, show up and arrest you, which is very suspicious. The general, the pre, the reverend, the sheriff, the mayor, the FBI director. And she, they put you in a cell next to her. Hey, your cigarette butt's gonna catch fire in the place. Come put that out. So now you're in the jail. I guess for not doing your job and throwing away the paper, kind of not turning her in. I kind of have a feeling this is this part's all dream sequence, but kind of hard to say for sure. There's that key again. that will come up pretty soon. There's a sheriff. Say, like, let me out. I'll do my job. So then uh, you go to the assistant director. This is all dream sequence, essentially. Kind of a montage of what will happen if you turned her in. So you go hand over the file. I think this guy's corrupt. I think that picture was this guy as a young as a young man. So now you've got a desk with your name. You know you're still in the FBI headquarters. This is, uh, I guess, Muslim guy working next to you. Yeah, the 
Oh, it gets pretty big. Look at that train. Seriously into railroads now. There's that key head again. We've got a backgammon table now. Uh, poker table. Cleaned up our pizza. We still haven't cleaned up our sugar packets, so. though. This is what packed. So these are the co-workers. So that Muslim guy and some other dudes coming over. Here's a cactus. Oh, thanks. Start playing cards with them. This is still all dream sequence. So now you're to investigate the Muslim guy. Same thing as before. And you're kind of feeling sad about yourself, I guess. He gets sent, he gets sent away. Gets fired, I guess. Now you're a senior special agent. At the bigger desk. People are knocking. And talking to this, this guy. And now you're to investigate that guy. Now you're popping pills. And now there's this guy. I don't know what he's doing. I'm getting water. Now you're to investigate that guy. And this guy. Let's investigate everybody. So now you're giving t lectures. Investigate everybody. Now your supervisor. Now your assist ASR A ASRC deputy assistant. Now the secretary comes in and says, now you're the uh, assistant director of the FBI and Tarver. And now you're handing out rewards to the new recruits. You're telling her to investigate people. And you're smoking. You still got that key. Missing persons. This is still unsolved though. Lucas. So now you're back at Halperin's uh, old office space. And it's cleared out. I guess she was fired. And you still have her locket. And now you're back to the jail cell. So that was all like kind of a flash forward of an option you could have taken, you know, if you'd turned her in. Which to me doesn't sound too bad. I mean, hey, you could become an assistant director of the FBI and you just, I mean, what, you investigate people? So what? It's like nothing wrong with it. 
as long as you're not doing anything super corrupt, which doesn't really seem like you are. I don't know what the big deal is. Anyway. So now you're gonna now you're gonna take out the acid tab. And do some drugs. Because drugs fix everything. Take some LSD. Now here's where the game gets real nuts. Well, kind of nuts. Alright, so she's tripping already. I don't know if you trip that fast. Doesn't seem like you would. Seems like it would take a little while. Let's look at the brick. Nice brick. Whoa, there's an elevator. Here to escape me from prison. Glad nobody's watching. It's kind of crazy construction to put an elevator right behind a prison. Wall. So now we're gonna go check out the crazy cave. We're still tripping. The sky's moving super fast. You can see the military base is kind of lit up. And there's crazy light coming from the cave. This is all the same as we've seen before. Pretty long cave. So this is a big statue. I guess this is a view. You know, and I don't know. I got the red light, the red door. Still tripping on LSD. So now we're in some kind of, I guess, the church. I don't know. tripping. We've got some crazy cult going on, sacrificing. I guess we're in the, the observatory, huh? 
Yeah, this is like the old observatory. A whole bunch of people in masks. And up, up front we have the priest, the reverend, the general. Um, that's the mayor, the assistant director of the FBI, and the sheriff. And I believe this is you. I believe this is Anne. Even though you're playing as Anne. And we have a buffalo in the center. And they're gonna sacrifice it. So again, the the bison is a uh, symbolic. So now you're playing as um, I think the sheriff. So in this sequence, you kind of play as a bunch of different people. Yes, yeah, so there's the jail cell. So you're playing as a sheriff. And you're building a model a ship. Even though you have female hands, you're... you're see there? Like a shift in perspective. So the sheriff was doing that. I don't think there's anything else to do other than... Uh, Click on them. Yeah, so he's building a model ship. So you, if you, so you break it. Hardly taft. He gets all pissed. sure why so now you're in that, uh, that photo booth in front of the gas station and you're playing as the mayor and so now you're looking at that photo booth And now you're seeing the mayor kind of be all sad. And he's crying, so the sheriff is crying, the mayor is crying. So now you're playing as the general. So you have that baby, that uh, stuffed teddy bear that we saw before. And you're in the diner. So you're kind of seeing the world through the eyes of all the different men in this game. And you're pouring vodka into your coffee. So now you're the general talking to, you see, your uh, General Ebenegger, and you're talking to your son or something who has a, who looks like a girl newborn girl, and that's why I have this thing for her. And for some reason, you take the kid. I don't know why. And then, uh... I think he goes to hug, the, hug his dad, and then they just salute instead. Oh, and the waitress had that bandana on. I, didn't, I missed that that one. So now you're playing as the FBI director. Um, eating dinner with the secretary. One pea at a time. So now the secretary is comforting the FBI director. And you take his place.
Now you're playing as the priest, the reverend, and your son Lucas has taken a photo of you and the young girl. Kind of scandalous. Obviously some infidelity going on there. And so the dad runs off to the son. In the background, it looks like the mother. I can't really tell. There's definitely a young girl in the door. But I think the mom knows. And here's all the men in the game. And now you're playing as the one who's going to sacrifice the buffalo. Or you already did. Now you're taking off your mask. And lipstick is a, yet another form of mask. Flip the mask over, and it reveals your face, I believe. So now you're back in the FBI headquarters, getting in line for the um, FBI badge. And now you're remembering getting the FBI badge from this guy. Drop the mask, the mask becomes alive. And now you're with, um, this looks like your father, so this is the hat that you saw earlier. Looks like he was, what, chief of police, maybe? And, uh, you know, he's dying. And he's, he's gonna, so you just became part of the FBI. So he's proud of you, I guess. And he gives you that key that you've been seeing the whole game. Except it's whole right now. He tells you to go into the closet. And there's that red door that we keep seeing. time outside now it's not clear what's inside this uh, so in the closet there's a red box it looks like a ballot box and inside the ballot box is um, a manila like kind of box another box but you don't see what's inside that box so it looks like a ballot box to slot on top, you know? So you're gonna open this up and it breaks. It opens, but the key breaks. So you're gonna hang on to that for the rest of the game. And then now you have this kind of um, paper box. And now you're taking the paper box to the furnace. But you don't know what's inside, so your your father told you to go get it, but it's not clear exactly what's in that box and why you're burning it. Maybe it's your father's you know corrupt past. Maybe it's uh, his cases he used to work on that you know, aren't solved. Uh, kind of hard to say what's what's in here. So you chuck it into the fire. It's Ash now. And you're part of the FBI. And there was a bird inside your mask. And then the whole observatory kind of lifts up. So remember, we're still tripping on LSD, so this is all kind of crazy dream sequence stuff. So now we're out in the field where we found the locket. And I think that's Lucas there. And now a UFO comes for whatever reason.
and then looks like a young woman. I'm not sure if we've seen her before. She has a different hairstyle. Could be his mom, but I don't think it is. Different haircut. And he takes, she takes Lucas into the UFO. But then you see like Lucas run away. So I think I think that UFO stuff was fake. So now we're back in the diner. Still an FBI agent. Still have that key. So your partner's gonna pay the bill. Looks like she's 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 happy with us. So you leave your past behind, looks like. And now you're riding with uh, Maria. Looks like out of town, past the gas station. Past the tunnel. And then you pass this, this kid right here with the guitar. And that's Lucas right there. And that's it. So I think you basically had a choice. Um, the game didn't offer you a choice, but you had a choice to either turn her in and kind of follow the kind of the corrupt FBI director and the kind of the corrupt establishment of all those men in the, in the game, or um, side with your partner and like basically just let him let Lucas go because I think Lucas was in a broken home or his father was cheating and cheating on his mom with his, I guess Lucas is one of his, Lucas's schoolmates and uh, Lucas ran away from home and uh, yeah I don't know I don't think that jail cell scene actually happened I don't know when you took the LSD or if you even did because it's kind of like you, you, in the game you took LSD during a jail cell sequence which I don't even think you were arrested but uh, I don't know it's not a bad game it's kind of weird fairly confusing if you don't know what's going on ahead of time but uh, it's nice very similar in uh, similar in style to like David Lynch Twin Peaks kind of thing to watch it a couple times to actually kind of get it but uh, yeah there's a few things that kind of are unsaw unexplained like what's in that box that your um, sick father gave you um, who is that woman in the UFO I think there's a bunch of questions that I didn't pick up on and maybe maybe, maybe they're in the game but I don't I don't think they are um, you know what does the bison what does the buffalo stand for what does the bird stand for? I think I think the bison stands for duty and the bird stands for like freedom. But it's, you know, obviously up for interpretation. But uh, feel free to leave a comment if you if I missed anything. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.